Jared Poland Fronos Photo dot com and this is your Carve You Up Photo News Fix. This fix is brought to you by Squarespace. Now I've been using Squarespace for jaredpoland.com for well over 10 years. There's a reason I've been using Squarespace for my very own portfolio for that long and it's just so damn simple to use. It's simply drag, drop and go, no coding needed. In fact, it takes me less than five minutes to put up a new gallery whenever I wanna put something out into the world. It doesn't get more simple than that. Now I know you can have your very own photo website up in a matter of minutes, for real. Give it a try. To get your 14 day free trial, head on over to squarespace.com slash photo. And if you decide that it's for you, use the code photo at checkout to get 10% off your first order. 10%. First up, Canon Rumors is reporting that Canon will bring an RF 400 F4 DOIS into their lineup in 2024. Now, for those of you who don't know what DO stands for, it stands for diffractive optics, not to be mistaken with BO or body odor. Think of it as a way of keeping a lens weight and size down. Now, it's not too dissimilar from Nikon's PF lenses, other than Nikon has done a much better job of releasing those over the last couple of years when compared to Canon. Canon's first DO 400 millimeter F4 lens was released back in 2001, with the second iteration coming 13 years later of a 400 F4. In fact, you can still purchase a version two DO new at B&H for close to $7,000 or you used around five grand. Now the rumors are now pointing to a DO lens making a comeback for the RF mount in 2024. Now will they be smaller, lighter, and cheaper this time around? No. Probably not. Now I think Canon would be smarter to follow Nikon's lead by going with a 400-4.5, a 600-6.3, and even an 800-6.3 style of lens. Now maybe Canon will surprise us and the RF 400 F4 DO will be cheaper tinier and super affordable. No. But hey, I guess we'll have to just wait and see what 2024 brings. Next up, Sigma has officially announced their long-awaited 70-200 2.8DG DNOS sport lens for the Sony E-mount, and fine. Yes, they also did it for the L-mount. Alliance, Alliance, Alliance. That no more than 12 people have invested in. Well, uh, Ooh. Uh, Ooh. Pew, pew, pew. Anyway, I got my hands on the new lens and took it out into the real world to shoot St. Joe's basketball, Villanova football, and a little kid in the park with permission from her mother. Our full review that compares it directly to Tamron 70 to 180 2.8 G2 will be out as soon as Dan finishes it, which is hopefully next week. You're not gonna wanna miss it. It's unauthorized clickbait. Now let's jump in to the specs. This lens has the DN designation, which stands for These nuts. No, it actually stands for Digital Native, AKA it's designed specifically for mirrorless cameras. Now this is a substantial feeling lens in your hands, weighing in at 2.94 pounds or 1,335 grams. It's internal zooming with weather sealing. It has an aperture ring for some dumb reason, 11 bokeh blades, AKA 11 rounded aperture blades, optical stabilization, two HLA focus motors, 77 millimeter filter thread, a non-removable tripod foot, and a few design choices that I'm not a fan of at all. For one, why is there a side screw style lens hood? It's not quick to put on or take off, and check this out. When on, it encroaches on your zoom ring. That's right, when you put the hood on, you lose finger real estate. Now since we're on the zoom ring, let's talk about it being placed at the end of the lens. Now, Sigma isn't the first to do this, as I yelled at Nikon many years ago for making the same dumb change. Do I like that the zoom is on the outside? The answer, Steven? No. no, still no. And this is why, because the zoom ring at the end makes you less stable as you no longer can tuck those elbows in. The throw of the zoom from 70 to 200 is a little long when compared to Sony's 70 to 200 GM2. And again, having the ring at the end makes it a little more awkward to zoom. Now with all of that out of the way, how are the images? Well, why don't you tell me? Here's a few from the basketball game, followed by a few from football, 
and finally, a few from the playground. The Focus is faster than Tampon's 70 to 180 G2, but not as fast as Sony's GM2. The colors, tones, and clarity look fantastic, and it's priced to sell at only $1499, compared to $2800 for Sony's. Now, full-time pros who demand the best of the best with Honor Sir should still spend the money on Sony's lens, but up-and-comers and photographers wanting a quality, budget-friendly 70 to 200 E-mount option y'all won't be disappointed. Hey, super huge mega camera giveaway is going on right meow. You know where I give one of you the chance to spend up to $4,999 of my own money on anything you want at Alan's camera? For more info, head on over to bit.ly slash megafro234. And finally, we take you back to Canon Rumors, where we got a whopper for you. Welcome to Kid Burger. They're claiming that Canon will not, I repeat, will not have a global shutter sensor in the next round of EOS R bodies. Bummer. They're claiming that the R5 Mark II and the yet to be announced R1 will not include global shutter sensors. They say they've been told by a very reliable source. Now let's hope that it's not the same reliable source that Sony Alpha Rumors uses. Magic source. Because that site gets it right 100% of the time. And if by 100% of the time, you really mean about 14% of the time, then they'd be right 100% of the time. What does that mean? What does that mean? That source went on to say that the readout speeds will be good enough to make the advantages of a global shutter less prominent, all while maintaining the expected image quality in the next generation prosumer and flagship camera bodies. Now with the announcement of Sony's A9 III with a stacked global shutter sensor, all eyes turned right to Canon to see if they will be following suit, and it doesn't seem like they are going to just yet. Now this is where the Sony fanboys will claim victory! Except for the fact that we don't know just yet what the limitations and trade-offs, if any, there will be in the A9 III. Now here's my thoughts as a Canon R3 shooter for the past few years. If Canon was able to squeeze out a firmware that allows you to shoot at 190 frames per second in RAW, albeit without AF, and zero issues with rolling shutter, I can only imagine what the capabilities of a more robust R1 flagship might be. Yes, you will still run into some flickering issues issues from time to time, but maybe the high ISO capabilities and overall image quality will be better without a global shutter sensor, or maybe that's just Now what do you think? Let me know down below. And there you have it, Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.